Hi, I'm Jim Jeffries. Thanks for choosing to listen to the Guardian Live podcast of the Edinburgh Festival 2009. I've just been interviewed by Miles Jupp at the Gilded Balloon, which was like being hugged by an uncle for a little bit too long. It wasn't just me. There was Ivan Brackenry, Tom Wrigglesworth, Sarah Milligan, John Holmes, Frisky and Manish. When I arrived, Miles was on stage telling the audience an incredibly risky joke about some government minister doing something with a... Did he just say banana? So that's how he coined the phrase banana felcher. (laughs) Well, let's see if the Guardian lawyers keep that one in. Knowing them, they'll probably just cut the set up. The Guardian, live at the Edinburgh Festival 2009. We've got a fantastic show for you today. Here to enjoy it with me, my first guest, Sarah Millican. So, uh, Sarah, it's lovely, genuinely lovely to see you. What's been happening has life been the usual roller coaster of um, cakes, new dresses, and Mills and Boone novels? What have you been up to? <laughs> That's exactly what it's been like. No, I haven't read any Mills and Boone, though. I used to, I used to produce audiobooks uh, in a former life, and I used to produce a lot of Mills and Boone. And uh, my favourite line was, um, he positioned himself for entry. <laughs> <laughs> sounded like a fat man trying to get through a doorway. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, Brian Logan in The Guardian, he said, uh, he said that your punchlines were timed to perfection. You're a joy to watch. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah, it is nice. It's a wonder why he still only gave us three stars, though. <laughs> well, I, I didn't know that. What a beast. Yeah, he read as a four, though. Oh, did <laughs> yeah. he? He says, uh, he says you've got a voice like a Geordie Minnie Mouse. Yeah. Is that, is that good? I don't know, because every year I get one of these. Like, the first year I got... Um, Reminds you of a young Thora Heard. <laughs> so I used that on my poster for the next year, and then last year I got uh, with the look of Deirdre Barlow in her prime. <laughs> in her prime, shut up! Not like she looks now, like she looked when Ken Barlow and Mike Baldwin were fighting over her. <laughs> That's me! <laughs> uh, no, I hear, I understand on the great but I hear that you've been offered a new job. Yes, um, uh, I got a, a parcel was delivered to the Pleasance yesterday and, um, and I didn't know what it was obviously and I, I went and opened it and it, it was chocolate and I thought first of all it was from a ban um, which worried me because I, I know I'd still want to eat them <laughs> even if they were from, you know, a loon um, I was trying to figure out if they've got Rohypnol in can you still eat them as long as you go home straight away? <laughs> <laughs> it saves us having night nurse that night <laughs> Um, but they were actually from a chocolate company and they, they had a, a letter attached and the letter said uh, we would like to offer you the job of quality control manager. <laughs> I thought maybe they'd read a couple of my reviews and gone, the comedy thing's not going to work out, let's give her a proper job. <laughs> so I get to eat chocolate whenever I like and just send in an email. I haven't replied to it, but it's kind it was, of cool. And it was unsolicited chocolate? I mean, you hadn't been quietly just filling in application forms for various jobs around the place? <laughs> no. What could I do? I understand they're looking for waitresses at uh, Betty's in Harrogate, by the way. I think you'd be very good at that. Um, um, I understand that you've got sort of northeastern um, blood in your family. Is that true? I'm sorry? <laughs> you know, all these posh and these highfalutin ways. You've got a Geordie Grander, haven't you? <laughs> His mum told me last week. <laughs> um, do I win that... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is, uh, that is, that is true, actually. Um, yeah, I do. You, my, my mother gave you this. She yeah. fed you this information. Right. Yes, she totally did. Right, did you... Did you... God. Right. <laughs> I think he's stumped, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no, you're absolutely correct. I did, I did have a, 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 Geordie, a Geordie grandfather. Is he here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's him slumping over, ashamed to be revealed as my grandfather. Um... <laughs> But still proud to be a Geordie. <laughs> <laughs> you've been out and about. Uh, you've been uh, chatting to uh, people like Peter Duncan, uh, the Chippendales. Uh, yes. Uh, who have you been, who've been chatting to this time? Uh, this week I chatted to Lionel Blair. <gasps> I know. Ooh. <laughs> He's popular with the audience. <laughs> Yeah, he was, he was a real sweetheart. He was lovely. Was he? What's, uh, what, what, what's he like? I mean, he's a nice man, is he? Is he, uh... he was nice. He had massive sunglasses on, so he looked a bit like a really old fly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what, did you, uh, what did you ask him? Uh, I started off uh, by asking him how his uh, show was going. The public have been unbelievably kind and wonderful. 
Of course, you know I'm a festival virgin. Oh, are you really? This is my very first Edinburgh Festival. There mustn't be many things that you haven't done before. I know, this is one of them. <laughs> and um, it's been incredible. You know, I've got my other show at the Apex as well. Yes, of course. And Ronnie Corbett came and Stephen oh, K. I almost came. Oh, wow. Claire Sweeney came and it's just been unbelievable. Yeah. Now, I remember you from uh, Give Us a Clue, yeah. of course. But, you used um, to come home from school and watch Give Us a Clue. I remember a story recently in the last couple of years when you and Alan Carr saved a man's life. That's a true story. That's an amazing Incredible. story. Yes. That's like the perfect showbiz story. A bit ridiculous, isn't it? But we did. And he was throwing himself off the North Pier at Blackpool. And he we hadn't said, just been to the show or anything, had he? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> we just recorded a pilot for a new TV series. The, the peer manager said, oh, Alan, 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 man's trying to commit suicide, you've got to help. And I went... We, said, we thought he was joking, but he wasn't. He was clinging. Oh my God! It was unbelievable. How did did you just talk him up, or did you both yeah, do like I a bit said, of a turn? <laughs> I just said he was clinging, and I said, "I'm Alan Blair, and that's Alan Carr for telly." And, and as I said that, he looked up at us, and we grabbed his hand and <laughs> pulled him up. Yeah. Wow! He should be like the like the sixth service, the sixth I, emergency. Should get a medal. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Goodness me! That. <clears throat> Excellent opportunity for him to use some, like, sort of give us a clue, standing there sort of miming reasons the man had to live. I love that he said he's Alan Carr off the telly. <laughs> That's so sweet, isn't it? Mm. Now, uh, did you also get around to asking him a bunch of daft questions? Yeah, they're not daft, they're insightful. Miles, shut up. Um, yes, I did. I asked him uh, various questions, and he has to, the, the, the thing with Milligan's Minute is he has to answer as many questions as he can in a minute. Lionel Blair, Milligan's Minute. What was your favourite subject at school? Oh, sports. And if your house was on fire, what would you leave behind? Leave behind yeah. everything except my family. Oh, what a lovely answer. Um, uh, this is a question that was left over from the Chippendales. How long does it take you to wax? You don't have to answer that. Wax? <laughs> I've never waxed in my life. And keep it that way, Pet, because it's really painful. Um, what do you read on the toilet? I, I try to stay on that as short as I can. What do you, I, on the toilet, a cigarette. And that helps. <laughs> that's pretty, that's it's good. It's a good tip. Thank you. Um, what's your alcoholic beverage of choice? Um, vodka and tonic. What's your favourite film? Oh, some like it hot. Oh, good answer. Um, if you were going out for your Sunday dinner, would you have beef, pork, lamb or chicken? Uh, if the crackling was good, it would be the pork. Elvis or Cliff? Uh, oh, Cliff. What's your favourite pudding? Pudding? Yeah. Chocolate. Anything chocolate mousse, chocolate, anything. Anything. <laughs> We did puddin. <laughs> my my favourite puddin. Uh, uh, how charming. Well, uh, by my maths, he got uh, he got ten right. Uh, let's see where that puts him on the leaderboard. She asked our questions wherever she goes, but just how many do they know? It's Billiken's leaderboard. Sarah Billiken's leaderboard. Well, thanks very much indeed. The the glamorous Anna seems to have. Dropped a bikini size. Uh, now, where does that um, <laughs> where does that put him on the uh, oh third? It, yeah, it puts him underneath the chip and tails. <laughs> Would he? It's not somewhere any of us want to be. <laughs> <laughs> Always on top. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, make sure you can see her show if you can. Every night at the Pleasance, the wonderful Sarah Millican. <laughs> We're just about to have a chat with John Holmes, uh, a man who holds the record for the largest fine ever for taste and decency offences in broadcasting. Uh, but before we do, let's welcome onto the stage someone who may well one day steal his crown, performing every night at the Pleasance Courtyard, and while he's here, broadcasting live to the patients at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Brimlington-on-Sea. Ladies and gentlemen, Ivan Brackenbury! Hi, uh, um, <clears throat> yeah, in a couple of minutes' time, we are going live. I notice you've got some older people in the audience, and there's no swearing in this, because you don't like swearing, do you, in comedy, the older people, do you? No? Like a bit of racism though, don't you? Eh? Just a little bit. Yeah, I've got some of that. Um, so it's great to see you. I'm loving it here at the festival because um, I keep seeing comedians and stuff. Uh, my favourite comic's Peter Kay. He's brilliant. Oh, what is it? He says that wine. It gets me every time. Um, oh, yeah. Garlic bread! <laughs> Unbelievable. So the thing about, um, thing about Peter is he like, thinks the things we all think, doesn't he? And he says the things all the comedians have said. So it's brilliant. 
absolutely love him. Okay, I think we're going live. Good luck, everyone, and loads of energy from you. And this afternoon's show is brought to you thanks to our sponsors, KY Jelly. The Ivan Brackenbury Disease Hour on Hospital Radio Yo, with, with KY, KY Jelly for women who married for money. Hospital radio broadcasters do it to ill people. Yeah, we do. 